Hi everyone, it's Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA here. I want to go over a pretty unique scenario here around how to calculate a reverse cumulative sum. So many of you probably know how to create a cumulative total. It's pretty common, um, I guess, technique or, or formula combination that you can achieve. But I had uh, a Enterprise DNA member request, how do you actually calculate in the support form? How do you calculate the reverse? And initially when I uh, read that, I thought, well, it's actually quite uh, quite difficult, quite complex. But then after a bit of uh, testing and, and, and working through a few different uh, combinations, I realized it's actually, it's actually not that difficult. It's, it, it's actually very similar to the cumulative pattern we know very well uh, with a slight bit of adjustment. So here is actually the, um, the, the, the current uh, post within the Enterprise DNA support forum. And so ultimately we got to a pretty, pretty simple solution in the end, which is great. And that's what I want to show you today. Um, what I'll do is I'll leave a link below uh, to this particular forum post if you want, want to review it as well. So let's have a look at the cumulative total first. So you'll see here that we have, in this particular case, I've put the cumulative total uh, in a variable, interestingly enough. So this is quite an interesting setup uh, um, um, just in itself. But you'll see here that this this particular part of the variable is the cumulative total pattern. So it's calculate total sales and then filter and then we go all selected dates. Now we use all selected because uh, we don't want to go back to the beginning of time, which is what would happen if you used all. So if you use all selected, what it does is it actually um, only opens up 2017 and then calculates the cumulative total within 2017 or within 2018, whatever selection you have you have there. And then what I've done down here is I've just used a bit of if logic, and I've said, well, if the total sales is zero, then equal to blank, if not, equal the cumulative total. Now, where this comes into play is that in 2018, you'll see here that there isn't actually as many um, it's sales, so this is actually historic data, there's not as much um, data available, and you'll see here that I don't want to project the cumulative sales all the way out until the end of the year, I only want to do it to the end of the actual um, sales that we're making, so the end of the data. And you'll see here how how um, cool this is, it's actually dynamic, this reverse one, which I'll go into in a second. So how do we do the reverse? Well, let's just have one quick last look at the cumulative total here. And let's have a look at this particular part here. So what we're doing for a cumulative total is on any particular day, we're opening up all the context on dates within the selection, so 2017. So let's have a look at this particular result here. Then we're evaluating through those dates and saying, well, is the date, is any date that we're evaluating through at each different row here, is it less than or equal to the max? And so you see here that max, if you think max is always going to evaluate to the current date. So um, you see here that the current date is 7th of the 1st and 8th of the 1st, max is always going to evaluate to that date. But this all selected is releasing the context on dates and then we're um, going to evaluate through every single date and we're going to say, what well, is the date less than the, the current date? Now, let's have a look at the reverse cumulative sales and let's have a look at the big difference here. The only difference here, the big difference is here, okay? So you'll see that we've got uh, all selected dates. Is the date greater than or equal to the min date, okay? This could also actually be max. I don't think this actually makes a difference um, in this particular case. And no, no, it doesn't. It could be max or min, but we'll just leave it as min for now. It does make a difference actually to the total. So that 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 actually, so it should be min. So you do want the total to be exactly the same as the totals um, of cumulative sales here. So if you change it to max, then what it does is it goes and grabs the very last result, which in this particular case is 21, right? So what we want to do is we actually want to grab at the total level the min, the min date. So that's actually correct. So if we look at what we're doing here, we're going calculate total sales uh, on any single, so on any single day, but within filter, release all the context on dates. So we want to go and evaluate through every single day and we want to see, well, is the date greater than or equal to the min date? So for instance, on this particular result here, it's going and calculating up every single amount, any every single date, which is above the current date. Right, and it's doing it for every every single row here. 
and that's it and that's basically it that's the only change you have to make right and that's so that's why it's so cool and what we can do is you see here i've actually placed this particular formula in a different context so you see here that it's actually now in the month and year context and it's still calculating up the cumulative sum in a reverse fashion so down here we've got december november october etc 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 and the totals are, are correct there as well and again it's a dynamic so we can click to any particular year that we actually make sales pretty cool right pretty cool so but not too difficult not too difficult it's it's really just reversing or re-engineering the cumulative uh, sales formula that we we already have so hopefully you enjoy this one um relatively short and sweet today because it's quite you know it's quite a specific use case and it's actually not too difficult so i don't have to do too much explanation so hopefully you find you know in in some instance uh, you know a use for this one yeah i know it's unique it's not um not 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 going to be generally used out there by everyone but it certainly is a interesting thing to think about you know if you can understand how this actually all works then you're doing very well and that's and and, and if you can um you know find a way to incorporate at least some of the logic in uh, that uh, that i've explained with this particular example in your own models then you're going to be developing some really great stuff okay all the best with this one um certainly uh, if you want to get more content uh, from enterprise dna as soon as it comes out uh, subscribe to the, to the channel um definitely worth a lot of content coming out soon and if you enjoyed this uh, tutorial and got a lot out of it uh, if you could throw the video a like I, I really appreciate it all the best and talk to you soon